Are we, are we, are, are, are we, we ever, for it? Oh, uh, yeah, we're recording. Are you Welcome sure? back. Yeah. What is the symbol that pops up? Nothing? On the left. Okay. All right, play film. One of the biggest challenges a rational face when developing Bioshock was figuring out a way to retain the feeling of a deep RPG while making the game accessible to a broader console audience. Ultimately, the team succeeded in creating an intricate system of weapon and character upgrades that gave the player choice and customization while keeping the gameplay fast, lean, and engaging. Fast, lean, and engaging. They really didn't make this high bitrate at all. I know, I, why does it have to look like garbage? I know, exactly. <laughs> like, that's really depressing. One of the hallmarks of Bioshock to me at least, was that it, it really blended RPG and sort of first-person action game together in a way that, you know, is sort of standard today, but a decade ago, was, was really pretty revolutionary. And I know for the team, I think at some point, it became clear that you wanted this to work on consoles, not on PC, right? Well, both, yeah. Yeah. Um, but so the idea of, you know, doing a console game and a PC, a PC game and doing something that sort of felt like a shooter but had much more depth. And I know in, in some of the early design docs you talked about sort of creating an <coughs> RPS Plus versus an RPG Lite. What was the difference in your mind between those two? I think for us, just the game of the big difference between System Shock and Bioshock ended up being that System Shock was more about your character growth and Bioshock was more about the environment. Because with System Shock, we really didn't have System Shock 2. We didn't really have the either the art team to make enough assets or the visual power to sort of make a, comp a really convincing environment. But as we started working on Bioshock, the art team was so strong that the ability to tell a story within the environment became the most important thing about the game. And that was sort of not something we thought right at the beginning. That was not really a concept we had. But as we started building things, we could realize that the visual world was the star of this thing. The rapture was really the star of this thing and telling the story outside of cutscenes, telling it in the world so the gamer could have discovered the story rather than us telling him the story, telling him or her the story. And it was still very much for the time, uh, I think for the time, quite different than what you had seen in terms of there wasn't a lot of growth in shooters. So right. it was still, I think for the time, very, very revolutionary. There still isn't. But no, I think not. Shock 2 was even more ahead of its time in terms of- One of the people that did something thing. different. <laughs> um, because he focused a little bit primarily, part of it was just figuring out how to do that all on a console controller was, was very tricky. No, I remember even the early demos, people were like, you know, you see a plasma, you see like a opposite <clears> weapon, you're like, oh, I've never seen that before in a shooter. And that was, you know, when you were coming out of the sort of, you know, the, the Quake, Doom, Half-Life, where it's like you have, you know, eight weapons on the keyboard <laughs> and you sort of knew what they were and they weren't going to change. Yeah. Sean, was that something that, you know, from a sort of creative standpoint, was it always clear that that was something you guys wanted to do or it evolved over time because you wanted to have more depth in the game? I mean, it certainly evolved over time and each you know, upgrade path was slightly, you know, had its own unique challenges. Like certainly upgrading the weapons, you had to design a base weapon that didn't feel like crap, still felt like something that you wanted to use, but then the ability to add the upgrades to, to that and each of the upgrades could come in any order. So you have to be aware that this, you know, parts A, B and C could come in at any different time to upgrade the weapon. In a first person shooter, that's your star. That's the thing that you're seeing all the time. When it comes to other things, plasmids, uh, things that are, you know. Tonics. Tonics, yes, sorry. It's been a while. Come on, Sean. I know, <laughs> it's 10 years. Those things were more offloaded to machines that you would then have to interact with so you're not carrying the inventory around with you. But each, each of these decisions on you know, how we're gonna upgrade the player yeah, it wasn't like a mouse and keyboard. Okay, we can just use the mouse and you have all these buttons at your disposal. You could arbitrarily point at a part of the screen really yeah. easily, which you could do in System Shock too. Yeah, so we certainly, you know, learned trial by fire when we were trying to adapt these things to the console at the time. Yeah, and like having you know, different ammo types and stuff like that. Like we went through numerous, numerous iterations of the interface to make it, uh, like we had the first time screen we sort of put the interface into play it was very obtuse and very tricky to get your head around and we just kept working on it and working on it and working on it because you want to feel like second nature and but that was we, we spent a lot of time on that oh this guy is not good we avoided this what motivated the idea of <coughs> having uh, so much <coughs> choice in 
the way you could sort of play through this game? What was it to you know give the player a, a better sense of authorship over the experience? Or what, what, what was driving? That? <laughs> I've always liked the idea of giving the player a lot of agency <clears throat> in their play style. And experimenting with the play style and trying different like things. Like the wrench the play style. Work, <laughs> I don't think they thought through that one. That you get to play around oh, with and that you back there is creepy. Yeah, it's it is. Because I think we were more skeptical about being able to do that with story at the time. In fact, so much to the point where that become almost like a joke. You know, that becomes the meta joke of the game of how little agency you have in, in, in yeah. your story. But agency in terms of how you play the experience and how you load out your weapons and how you interact with the environment. As compared to most shooters at the time, where basically like you can shoot them with the shotgun or shoot them with the you know the pistol, that was really important to us. So we spent a lot of time trying to make the game, the world react in a way that you would expect and hope it to react when you tried something. Right. And some of those system or decisions we made about systems fed back into a narrative, like locking Ooh, wow. Adam behind Big Daddy and the little sister. Like you can't get Adam unless you deal with the Big Daddy, which then becomes a roving boss fight, which then becomes another system that I don't know if we planned that from the start or it was one of those happy, like, you know, serendipity, like, oh, this decision that we made about putting Adam behind the Big Daddy totally works because now we have a different type of boss fight that you hadn't really seen uh, actually, in other games. Actually, it was, bad, it was the other way because what happened was is originally there was no concept of Adam and Big Daddy just had money and other treasure on them like every yeah. other splicer. Yeah. And they were so tough, nobody would ever fight them because why on earth would yeah. you go after that guy? Right, go off a bunch of small slicers and get the same amount. Yeah. So we had to come up with a, a currency that was exclusive to them because yeah. we knew that was where the fun was, right? But we also knew people were terrified of them and we didn't want to fight right. them. Yeah. So game, video game development and system development is a lot like economics, right? You know, in economics, you try to encourage certain behaviors through tax, usually through tax policy. You know, well, you want business growth, so you lower taxes on, on certain segments of the business economy, or you want to encourage, you know, people to move into this area, so you make incentives to move in here. Or you we had to make an incentive for players to fight the big daddy, and Adam became that incentive. And then Ooh. once you had this Adam, then you had a new piece of narrative, which you could then incorporate back into the story. Yeah. E bit of Adam. E. Talk a bit about the the <laughs> vending machines and that sort of whole <coughs> approach to, I guess, what is kind of a tech tree, but you know, and, and coming from PC games, you know, used to strategy games and whatnot with very complicated ways of how you would upgrade things. I thought you guys did a, a really interest. You had a really interesting approach to how you made it very accessible to a console audience. How did that evolve? Was like, did you know the vending machines were going to be there from the get go? We had vending machines in System Shock 2, so we were sort of lifting that, and I always thought that was a fun, um, it was a fun notion to, because it's a it's a affordance that people already understand, you know. They see a machine, vending machine, they know immediately, oh, that's where I buy stuff, right? Yeah. And you also then have to have a shopkeep. When we talked about wanting to make things, put limitations on ourselves so things felt fully believable, yeah. if we had a shopkeeper sitting there, you can't shoot him, he right. sits there, he doesn't say anything, and all of a sudden he feels fake, where a vending machine, the circus of values machine, can feel 100% authentic, you know, despite the fact that it's selling like ammo and stuff like that, <laughs> you know, which is, you But know, in an objective of society where you don't have rules and regulations right. on you that have type of thing, it, it feeds back into the narrative. But you don't then break the fiction of <coughs> by having these characters who sort of don't really bre live and breathe in your world. So the vending machines became an important part of that, but we still want to give them character and hence the, you know, and so, that clown image came from a piece Do of the uh, voice. That image is actually from like a, a fruit container or something uh -huh. from like the 1940s. Okay. And uh, so we had a book of like life royalty free images, <laughs> and I saw that image, and I'm like, let's call, let's put that clown on, and we'll call it Circus of Values. And then you know, we wrote a line, some lines for it. Decided he'd be this sort of asshole clown, and then um, then we hired the best actor <laughs> in the world <laughs> to play that part. That was that was me. Uh, <laughs> Who had I cost <coughs> my, my biggest event was I didn't cost anything. Um, I didn't know you were really. Well, I was a clown. Yeah. No, I was a clown. Um, Do it. Said every minute, yeah. My wife hates that voice. She <laughs> hates that voice. You can give us a little of it right here. <laughs> Welcome to the Circus of Values. She does not allow me to do that, so oh, I, okay. I do it outside of the house. Okay. But it, it allowed us to it allowed us to have something that felt very rich and very real, while being very limited at the same time. <laughs>
And also, you know, <laughs> plasma, uh, <coughs> videos and how you explain sort of what a plasma was. That was a really fun way, I thought, to sort of explain that. Sean, how did you guys evolve that? Because it was a very art Again, artistic I think, approach. I think those came on pretty late too because we, you know, we were developing all these systems and you make the assumptions because you're dealing with them every day that the player who gets this game is going to understand what these systems are. And you know, we always joke that you can't ship a developer with a game or you can't expect somebody to, to have a readme file for all these things. Nobody's understanding what these plasmids are or how to use them. How do we present these to the audience in, in such a way that they're going to understand what it is fictionally and what it is functionally? I feel as Rob Waters did a lot of the, the animations on those. And we sit down and we, you know, write out like a little 30 second commercial of what this thing is. And again, because going back to the narrative, this is what would happen in Rapture. People are trying to sell these things, so they would come up with commercials to explain why you need this. Using that as, as your framework, you can then come up with all of these you know, little, little gags that people will remember that have a little personality to them, but I think ultimately in the end weren't that expensive to, no, and to create because they're cheap. I think the, one of the most important things about it is we sent we, we didn't want them to be long and we didn't have a lot of budget for the arts. We had like a couple of frames of animation yeah. in them essentially. And so we had to figure out how do we message how this thing works in like that. And, and that's what marketing is, right? You know, it's how do you message what, how something works. And marketing and tutorializing are very similar things, right? You're trying to get a message across in a very brief period of time in a very snappy fashion. Mm -hmm. And I think that- Just Games don't do that. that. No. Nope. We talk about games, <laughs> and tutorials are sort of death. And because yeah, they, they made, made like tutorials in the game. Yeah, like yeah. this game was great. There's right? like a tra that. shooting yeah. range or something like that, and you narratively they never really make sense either. Oh, and they're so boring. And so yeah, I hate. We always try to put a big yeah. burden on ourselves of, of how do we train people while not letting them know they're being trained. And brevity is really important to that. So we sort of we had a bunch of art constraints in that, which also led to a bunch of writing constraints. And so those things were like. I don't even know if they were 30 seconds, yeah, but they were like really short. Seconds. Yeah, like 15 seconds long. We had to explain a whole plasmid in that period of time. Yeah. And I think that was a good exercise because it also made the game, it forced us to be concise and to really explain what this thing was like that. So good. Now objects at foes. You can even catch grenades and throw them back. We could just do that. It's true, we could just walk around. <laughs> Instead of doing it the complicated. There you go. That was 11, 12 minutes. And uh, we're back. That didn't throw <clears throat> me off at all. Well, what, what are we doing? Over there. Going this way? Yeah. We gotta do this really dramatic like, man. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you, you know what, what's coming up, right? I don't remember. It's the... He's, a, he's gonna tell me. Atlas. Oh no, it's a... You got it! Should be smooth sailing from here. Oh, yeah, the... I'll meet you up ahead. Okay. Yep. The turning point of the game, <laughs> as it were. Smuggler's hideout. Da 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 da. This is where we get to run scot free. I wonder if we're gonna have weird flashbacks about our parents. Uh, I, <laughs> I feel like I said that a little bit too early. There you go. <laughs> Moira! I've tricked. The voice acting still holds up pretty well. It does. Which is mo more than you can say about most games. What do you mean by hold up? Like, sound good? Yeah, they like... still sound good. You can also pay for these. Interesting. Instead of hacking them. Uh. But that's lazy. That is capitalism. Hmm. <laughs> oh, oh! Uh, that was. Uh, 
thought. too good to be true. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, Nice. Using a Pac-Man strategy. <laughs> Who is this? One of the smugglers. We oh, no. here. Figured we all be part of Ryan's great chain. <laughs> Turns out Ryan's chain is made of gold, and ours are the sort with the big iron ball around your ankle. Mm. He's up in Fort Frolic banging fashion models. <sighs> We're down in this dump, Yankee. How inappropriate. Fontaine's promising something better. He's like uh, one of us, you know? Like he's worked a day in his life. He says meet him at his fish packing joint at 11. I'll go, bring a couple of guys. Hey, it's not like things could get a lot worse. <laughs> hmm. Mm, nope. No, it's not, Peachy. Okay, okay. Alright. This guy has a low alcohol tolerance. Yep. Oh, there it is. Oh, that looks good. It does. Hit the switch up there in the control booth and let me in. I think it's time to shake hands and get acquainted. Yeah, man. Then you run off. Spoilers. You had your fun, but what? enough is enough. If you press that button, you'll learn what it means to truly be mine. You can't do anything, Ryan. We we got we have the upper hand. Is there a dude in here? Not yet, that's after the event. How far can you go here? That's something I always wonder. If it stops you from going down. Yeah. Like, does something Not happen? exist? Does it just not stop you? Oh. Huh. Never really done this. Oh, that's really cool. I never heard that. I don't think they are making any noise. They're not that. Oh, can you turn it on on the yellow panel? No. All right. It would be really cool if you can. This game is no good. <laughs> oh, there's a recording there. Can I just jump right here. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, there's a door. <clears throat> Wonder who this is. Ah, Spend my favorite voice. Gone with that crowd scientist. She's damaged goods, all right. <laughs> Just like all those chumps they scraped out of them prison camps. But she's no crackpot. She's gonna make me the kind of scratch that'll have Ryan look like he's running a paper route. She just needs some supplies to get the ball rolling and a friend to watch her back. <laughs> she just need a bath. <laughs> Whatever he's saying. All right. <gasps> what? No. What's going on? Oh no, this is intended. Forget my reaction. <laughs> there he is. <clears throat> I'm not over here. I'm over here, dude. Oh, there it is. Oh, no. no I, didn't, I didn't know they crawled through this. Picture though. What? 
That was. It's because you didn't right. get her fully on. All right, come on, come on. Whoa, whoa. He's on the ceiling. You gonna drop down? Come on. What did we get? Uh, like, oh, nice. Okay. Or for the moment, the yeah. egg. Oh, that was a good picture. Close. I get this. Oh. Giving it a lot. Oh yeah, the wrench is back. Oh, oh yeah. That's On true. OP fashion. Oh, he's, is he? A, yeah. <laughs> I don't even really need that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Also, this is the end for me if you don't mind. Oh yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> I just want to hear him say the line. Uh oh. Uh oh. Alright, here we go. Um, say what line? The. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oops. I forgot. Is that. Did we need a picture of that? No. We don't need a picture of guys with guns. Is that violent? Very violent. <clears throat> Easy. Oh no! No, wait, okay. Oh, two Look. bodies kind of just. They're splicing. You ooze in like an assassin, and then you try to sneak out like a thief. Is that a. No CIA spook. Who are you? Is that a splicer? I want to know if there's an actual family. Uncover it or eliminate it. I feel like there had to be a family, because like, why in the world would he come all the way out here and risk himself if he didn't actually have one? Good trick, Ryan. But what? He doesn't gain anything, does he? You. He gains your backing. I don't know. I feel like either or it would. Ooh, who is this? Peachy. The Irish pork pie offered me a deal. Pie. I him Fontaine and I walk out of here. That simple. Mm -hmm. How do I know that fat fuck isn't Fontaine? Oh, jeez. I know I'm not all Fontaine's guy. Fontaine's got. And everybody wants it. Ryan's got a whole lot of talk in a nice suit. Even down here, any idiot can see which way the wind is blowing. A wind? Hey, can you do that with the shotgun? The aim down? No. Makes sense. Can you aim down with the wrench? Oops. Alright. <laughs> Load? That's not immersive. Immersive. Hmm. I don't like Arcadia. This section? Too big. Oh, I hate it. It's um, a very confusing map. No, oh, I, my favorite line. My favorite line. This is one of the flowers and plants and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like this. My favorite line. Moira. Patrick. Ain't that just like Ryan? Does he get super? Wait until we're almost out, then he pulls the string. <laughs> we'll find the bastard. We'll find him, and we'll tear his heart out. I came to this place to build the impossible. You came to rob what you could never build. A hump. Oh, keeping it that's how capital works. works. Even the air you breathe is sponged from the Does this look oh. better? Uh, eh. I love how that line.
lines up with you opening the door. You get, you get, you get, you get, you get to the Batasphere in the Rolling Hills. That'll take you straight to the devil himself. And then all debts will be paid in full. You're good night to yeah, now you start getting a bunch of like. Will the build your stuff? Yeah, stuff. build the bear. Yeah, build a gun. For children. Build a gun for kids. It's totally something you'd find in Rapture. It is. Yeah, there should be a big daddy over here. But big daddy. No, no. Later, not here. that's the other side. Yeah. Jeez. There's a ring around here. To the left? Yeah. So, in the water, you know? Yeah. That's, that's gonna work. There we go. Seems like some poor blighters are starting oh, to see ghosts. Do we have pictures of these? And now bleeding guns. Ain't life in Rapture Grand. What was that? Oh, Red Beef. Right, right under you. Right under you. Uh, Eve. Oh. No, I was wondering why was there drifting? Does that mean oh, someone was running in there? I don't know. That was weird. I think does it, uh, mess up? I don't know. It could also be very intended because of this situation right now. Yeah. Alright. Oh, take a picture. Hey, over here! Uh, Houdini. I don't remember there being a door there. <laughs> alright, alright, you ready? What? Am I ready for what? <gasps> Look up! There's a shatter! Oh my... Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> say it! Say the line! <laughs> How many pictures can you get? <laughs> Oh, one more. Oh, uh, it, it was... Action shot, action shot. What? Go after him. He's running. Oh, he is? Yeah. You did the money. He's upstairs, right? He's right here. What? You gotta get him transforming. All right. Oh. Hey. Someone behind you? Surprise! Yeah. Oh. Oh no, we already took a bunch of pictures. Today, Arcadia was closed oh, it's lying off to all but paying customers. A man hires me to oh. the forest at the bottom Dude. of the ocean. A lock in the wood into a lock. Should a farmer not be able to sell his Ooh. food? Is a potter not entitled to a profit from his pot? <laughs> <sighs> I started to argue with a man, and then I remembered who signed my checks. Though they think worse than a hypocrite is an unemployed one. Mm. Yes, that would make you a parasite. Huh, somebody there? Oh. It's picture time. Oh, are these pictures? I think the girl, yeah, it's not the guy. Haha! What's what are these called? Thuggish. <laughs> nice shot. Nice shot. That's it. Oh, oh. oh. We got. Oh, that was a lot. There's a leadhead. 
That was a lead I had right beside you. To your left. Oh. Oh. There's a thug. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Darling, 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 you shouldn't have. Ooh. Today's dangerous times. It never hurts to be a little faster. Oh, this is a good one. Swing and run faster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello? Oh. You don't need it, yeah. Yeah, they're more powerful. Uh, <laughs> no, there's a turret. Uh, right behind that wall. Air? No. That wall. Yep. Right. Uh. <clears throat> oh, picture. Oh. Really? Yeah. Oh. Nice. I think it got the level. Yes. <laughs> All right. One will stop now. A new guy? No. He's a redhead. Oh no no, he's a th uh, thug. Do some actions, thug. Come on, come on, come on. That action? Is it action? Oh. Okay. That didn't, yeah. Oh, was a, not that good. Really? I think do you wanna pause now? It's uh no it's right about done. Oh okay. Alright. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Yep, oh, we'll see you then.